Last time, Robbie and I made a new friend Kevin here in Guatemala, and we jumped on his boat for a ride back to Mexico. The weather window for heading up north was going to be a short one, and Kevin's Guatemalan extension for repairing his boat was about to expire, so we pulled up the anchor and we were heading to Livingston to check out in a jiffy. It was sad to say goodbye so quickly to this sweet river, filled with families and friends out for an afternoon fishing session. We were coming around the shallow bend in the river that we remembered from before, when Kevin recognized some cruisers who evidently just came down from up north. They advised us about the shallow bend and the closed Belizean border situation. We got stuck here last time. We got stuck right about there. Right in the middle of this corner here. And there's 58 feet of water. It's deeper than it says it is, actually. The, the hurricane must have dug out. I think we got stuck because I was trying to read this sign here. Still can't read it. Wall with everybody's phone number on it. A little bit of a cut block. We said goodbye to these protected river waters and their tangle of wild jungle mixed with the bustling pueblos. The river mouth with her many wrecks reminded us now that we were closer to the open ocean and we would have to proceed with even more caution. I know you can fit through that. I know you did. I pushed you up there. As soon as we laid down the anchor, we were already bringing it back up again with a super speedy checkout process that only lasted about 20 minutes. This boat had a deeper draft than the one that we had come down in, so it was necessary to hire the tow boat to get over the river bar. Bringing us exactly on the same track. Yeah. I think this is... You guys are not doing the tip thing? Tipping? At one particular point, even the tugboat seemed to be struggling. I have to hang off the boom or something, maybe. So Robbie and I did every little thing that we could do to help. Standing on the rail to try and heal Promise over, even just a little bit, and reduce the draft by maybe a centimeter or two. When we were free from the shallows, Hasta luego. <laughs> it was time to head into the wind and raise the mainsail. We would be sailing into the night. The area was surprisingly filled with marine traffic. Freighters heading in and out of Puerto Barrios, the other Guatemalan port on this Atlantic side. When the sun finally came up, we were in Belizean waters, the forbidden country, for the time being. In a non-pandemic world, we would have perhaps stopped in at Placencia. You know, take our time, wait out the less than ideal weather coming up, take some footage of the nice place and upload a video or two. Kevin had already sailed Belize, however, and he didn't enjoy its infamous bureaucracy. So we wanted to just get through without stopping, without fuss. You use this with a Coke bottle. Right? You put a few in the Coke bottle, you stick the pipe in it. No, keep the pipe outside. Somebody bought bananas, so I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Robbie just wanted to make sure that we were all well fed. And we were well fed. It was a little sketchy bringing it over the 
the pull, the push pit. Yeah, it's not a real good fishing boat. But you did it! You did it! It was lucky, too, that he has this instinct to catch our food all the time. We often discuss environmental impacts of taking more than what you need. In this case, little did we know yet, we would really, truly need the fish. The weather changed from full sunshine to overcast and rainy, back and forth. But most notably, the little bit of easterly wind that we were expecting seemed more and more like it was tending to come directly from the north. Always! If I see 50 knots, I see 25 knots. Like. 90% of the time. Gas dust, dust. Which could spell big trouble for our short weather window to slip past this kind of difficult cape on our way to Mexico. We gathered all the headway and the fish that we could take while it lasted because we knew that something, if not everything, was bound to go wrong. The SP Promise has two main fuel tanks. One large one located in the full keel in the bilge, and another day tank in the cockpit locker. This is the this is the motor, the pump. Okay. So if it squirts out here, then the pump is working and we have a problem from here to the tank. Yeah. A small pump is required to slowly send fuel up to the day tank over time, and then the fuel travels down to the engine again as needed. The little motor was having trouble as we neared the halfway point of Belizean waters. Something seemed to be blocking the fuel from reaching the day tank. I'm going to blow a bit. I'm going to blow a bit. Are you uh, sucking or blowing? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Okay, I got it. This one? I got it. You got that one? Pleasure to watch you work. You just take your time now. Don't slice your femoral artery. The plastic? Thing? Yeah. Oh, great. Here you go. Here's a second chance. I suggested removing the small fuel filter along the pipe to the cockpit. Let her rip. Well, oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Hey. And voila. The fuel was pumping up there again. Cut, remove, reconnect. For a little while. Huh? It's halfway done. Choco has some issues in the cockpit. He doesn't like quick movements or ropes creaking around the winches. Sometimes you just have to pull him out of the way for everybody's safety. Another item to repair, the wind vane, which could steer the boat much more economically under sail instead of draining the batteries like the struggling autopilot does. But that was not working out either. You want to you want to uh, pass it around? Damn it. Yeah, it's a cool. Cool. Tank. I haven't caught one of these ever in the Caribbean Sea. I don't know, it's a cobia, it's one of the best eating fishes you can get. The blade has to face the wind. This. No, the, the vein is barely moving. That's so weird. Well, it shouldn't be moving because we're holding a nice steady course right now, right? Are we? Uh, that's all. We were now heading out of the protected inner passage of Belize and out into the open ocean, when the day tank was showing empty again. Nothing yet. Yeah. 
There's no. something wrong with your pump, Ben. She, she's a gun up sight. So it pumps just when we happen to find a way to unblock the system and she yeah. pumped for two minutes and that's it? I guess the blockage has been forcing the pump and then it's dry and it's been damaging the pump. At this time, no fuel seemed to be coming up from the lower tank and up into the day tank. So somehow, fuel from the bottom would have to be brought up to the top. With a two bottle system, I, I can... Do you think that's algae? Yes. Oh, it's water so and algae. But the problem is the amount of water that, that surprised me. How much water got in your tank? What pump are you guys using? We know we're just siphoning it out. Oh, he's siphoning. He's sucking it out. Blech. Piece of his. How do you siphon it out if it's lower than you are? It's not lower. You put it in the bottom of the bilge and it's more... Ah, uh, okay. So, so. <laughs> Non-diesel air. Ah. Oh, it feels good. It's like that guy down in the bilge. That, the freighter in... Uh, Ooh, nice fish. In water world. They, should, they throw a match down in there and he's like, Oh, thank God. The diesel coming up from the bilge tank wasn't looking too good either. We could pour most of the liter of the bottle into the day tank, but with each bottle, we would have to leave about this much behind so as not to contaminate the engine with gunky, watery diesel. And the brown stuff is the water. The brown stuff is, is scum and water. Yes. Okay. Our zigzag of a headway being made only under sail was looking rather sad as the northerly wind blew in our faces intermittently too strong, and then too lightly, but always from the north. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching a master at work. This is particularly hard one. I don't There's know why no it's so slimy. Yeah, yeah. Is there sound? <laughs> yes. Oh dear. <laughs> can I'll you use, edit it out later? I can edit out, but it's probably, I won't. <laughs> oh dear. You probably won't use it. No, I'll probably use it. It's better than my narration. All we could do was keep on heading into it, moving forward slowly, enjoying life out on the water, on the sailing vessel promise. Did I mention that we had two dogs on board? We met a pod of dolphins again, at almost the exact same spot as when we traveled down from Mexico. But this time, they were not leading us into victory. This is a couple, him and her. Hi there, this is the alpha male probably, the alpha female. He's got a nice pattern on him. Yeah. I don't know, they're like really chilling, huh? I don't want to push my luck. <laughs> We're totally worth it. We're totally worth it, yeah. Oh, it just has a slight tendency this north to push in. It was five degrees, ten degrees of the The wind was picking up now, just as we are nearing the end of the protection from the true ocean swell from the outer reef. Promise was just bouncing up and down, making very little headway. Although we had a great little dinner come aboard, just before nightfall, nothing could deflect the fact that conditions were deteriorating as the sun went away. The wind was coming right down on our nose, and the opposing current was making for a slow and bouncy ride. 
Quite simply, we were bashing into it. Yeehaw! <laughs> What'd you say? I dropped five liters of diesel. Ugh. So at 3 a.m., we started heading back. But back to where? The island where we had stopped on the way down to Guatemala offered no protection from these conditions. But perhaps Water Key might. We crept slowly towards the protection of this small little mangrove on the outer edge of the Belize Reef to begin working on the diesel pump situation again. we wanted to make any headway against the persistent northerly, or if the northerly happened to go away and leave us with no wind at all, it would be helpful to be able to confidently turn on an engine once in a while. But this gallon pump for drinking water was no help at all. After waiting out some more rain and wind, we pushed on again as the wind seemingly began to come around from the east. Second attempt. Oh, hi, Pedro. He's waggoo. Why is he wagging? He's happy to be on this kind of tack, huh? Oh, he wants a hug. He wants a hug. Oh, no. He just wants a hug because we're sailing. He just wants a hug. He just wants a hug. Oh, he's a good boy. We hesitantly began heading towards Mexico again having called the Belize Port Authority to let them know that we were stuck and waiting for weather. They relayed to us a forecast that seemed highly suspect, as we continued to observe clouds rolling in from the north. Autopilot was struggling, engine was struggling, as we didn't want to use too much fuel, and now the sound of thunder was surrounding the boat. Spare GPS, we've got phones. Waterproof bags. So naturally, it was time to start putting electronics in the oven. And we have to remember not to cook anything. Gusting, wet wind coming from the wrong direction. seas building up as the wind collided with the growing effect of the Gulf Stream current. But Robbie's got a fresh catch for breakfast, lunch and dinner, all set for us. Big Wahoo must have gone after it. Or a Barracuda, right? Huh? Or a Barracuda? Oh. Uh, I think it was a Wahoo. Okay. He left all the good parts though. Yeah, left the good parts. He bled it for me. Definitely on my wish list to be able to get that one I'm out at sea. God bless you. Thank you. We could see a passing ship on the AAS and checked in with them about the weather. Their forecast pointed to a totally different story from the one we'd heard earlier. We, we can sort of hold it now. We are doing good course and it's decent, but he says we're going to have 35 to 40. Yeah, I don't want to be out there. I don't want to be out here tonight. Well, he didn't say 35 to 40. He said 30, 25 to 30, so... It's more. It's going to be more. It, it's, it's a depression blowing through. We're going to have to wait for the sh** to blow through. So we're turning around again. It was hard to control the boat careening down waves as we headed back towards the anchorage, for a second time now. If we were not all here to be able to take turns steering, this might have been a good opportunity to practice heaving to. But instead of heaving to, honestly, we were all looking forward to just heading back to the anchorage to rest. Plus, Robbie wanted to continue fishing. Maybe the missing to a smidge. I don't know if 
I needed his update to turn around. I was there and they asked me. So we're anchored off of Water Key in Belize. This is just at the entrance to kind of the, the main shipping channel that goes into <clears throat> Belize City. We've been here <laughs> one, two, three. Three nights, I think so. <laughs> waiting for the weather to turn around and we actually turn up, turn back, which is something we've done very rarely in our lives before, but... Uh, That's not true. We turn back all the time. Anyways, it was... We turn back all the time. We turn back twice since I met you. Once. Back in Fort Bragg. That's it. Yeah, we turned around because we had a lot of weather and it was... We were being... We were beating to the north and I think we just kind of turned back. Nothing broke. I think we all kind of just got the eerie feeling that we might break something, so we, we turned around and did 40 miles backwards, backwards back to the anchorage here in about a, a quarter of the time that it took us to beat up to that, was, that point and the cold i think the cold made us turn around also so now we've finally felt our easterly wind that we needed and and it's a torrential downpour <laughs> just trying to decide if we're gonna go out into it so when we left livingston we were reaching uh nicely uh northwards with uh with a light breeze, very pleasant evening when we um, got ourselves out of the sandbar and then started with the strong northerly wind blowing in our face in and around uh, just past Placencia and since then we, we had a, we've just had the strong northerly in our face. We've anchored several times to, to, to rest <laughs> trying to beat northwards and now because we're at the channel entrance we're, we're trying to make our final push we have we still have more than halfway remaining but um, the remainder of, of the voyage will be out in the open ocean so we're, we're planning accordingly because uh, if we do a lot of beating windward in a in a big ocean that's that's where you kind of break things so we want to be careful the belize uh port authority have uh, were nice enough this morning to give us a weather update but i haven't been very trustworthy of the the weather forecast although our original weather forecast that we took pictures of from windy one out, yeah. week ago have been accurate for one week so the diesel yeah we've, not, we've been having to suck diesel out of the tank the uh, the pump that fills the day tank has, has given up, so yeah. we're resorting to... We've been sucking it out with, by mouth. We tried the little um, hand pump for for water, for the jerry can, for, for the gallon jugs, and that doesn't work. I don't understand why that doesn't work. Those water, those <laughs> water pumps for the gallon really suck, man. We've gone through several in Mexico. This one is a, a, a better quality one, yeah. and it doesn't work. Are you guys recording something? Yeah. yeah. You doing... want to say hi? Hi! Hi! I'm Kevin! Hi! We waited with another boat on their way up north here in Water Key Anchorage again. Our neighbor was receiving very limited internet through their Canadian phone plan, unlike our Guatemalan and Mexican SIM cards, which would not provide roaming here in Belize. So another possible weather window was shaping up in the next couple days. We sat tight, watching the local fishermen sail from key to key around us, while the last of the northerly winds blew on through. Finally, the day arrived. We would make our third attempt to escape Belize. Even really weirdly. What did they do? 
The dogs were restless. We were all restless. You can only get skipjack, blackfin, or wahoo out here. We wanted to end this purgatory of being stuck at anchor in no man's land, going round and round. Not exactly light, you see. It's dog with handles, it's like doggy cases. This doggy is, suitcases. <laughs> that one's real light though. This is a little gum, a little more. He, he weighs like 10 times the weight of her, but he's only like five three times. times. The we cut this island five miles off uh, of Belize, off of uh, Ambergris Key. But I'm not seeing it in real life. It might not be there. We'll open up now. Okay. It's not there. The self-steering was still not working. Although this was a great time to troubleshoot it, this particular project was not moving forward. So how do you tune a wind vane? With grease or there's a screw to tune or what? Where the gears meet? Yeah. You have to move them over one. Okay. And it's really a pain. But. However, we were moving forward with a surprising amount of speed after a week of bashing and waiting and fretting. Our last minute provisioning was simply not enough for this trip. And at this point, Robbie's catch was literally keeping us all fed. Yeah, that jumps too, so. I got my stone. It was the afternoon now, and easterly trade like winds were propelling us along towards our own little floating home. Now the evening was coming, and we prepared to enter our third night here out in the lumpy patch of water that had defeated us two times before. We prepared for it by putting up a precautionary reef. A bit more so self laps a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not Would we make it through this time? Join us on board next video to find out. <laughs>